Pay-per-click can be a super valuable service for marketing agency owners. A lot of the time when potential customers need a product or a service, what's the first thing they do? They go to Google and they search for that product or service. And if you're using pay-per-click ads, you're guaranteed pretty much to show up in those top results. So let's talk about pay-per-click services and how you should be taking care of them as a marketing agency owner. All right, welcome back and thank you for joining me. My name is Jordan Steen, also known as Serial Entrepreneur, and at this channel we talk all about starting a marketing agency, building a personal brand, or really just using digital marketing to build any business online. If you're interested in any of those topics, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell in the bottom right hand corner. We'll make sure to update you with all of our newest videos, trainings, resources, our free giveaways that we do every single week here at my channel. Oh, and PS, make sure to stay tuned to the end of today's video because number one, if you stay tuned, we'll give you our SMMA checklist. That way you can learn all of the tools and resources you'll need, plus a two week training on starting your marketing agency. And if you leave a comment at the very end on what you learned in today's video, we're gonna pick one winner to win our three month mentorship program giveaway. So make sure you stay tuned to the end. Now, I should take a second to mention to everyone watching this video, if you are an agency owner, I want to kind of stress the importance of not getting hung up on pay-per-click if you don't have tons of experience with it already. Pay-per-click is not something that you learn very easily. It's not a type of service that you can just learn through taking a course. Yes, you can take a course and yes, it will teach you a lot about the information, but really one of the best, you know, types of experience you can have is actual experience running the campaigns. That's one of the best ways to really get good at this. So if you are not wanting to spend months and months getting good at pay-per-click ads, most of you running agencies are going to outsource this work, all right? And don't worry, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later in this video, but don't get too caught up if you don't understand any of this. Again, take the time to learn the basics of how it works, how the setup works, how keywords work, why search volume is important, things like that, how much inventory is available versus competition, how much cost per click it's going to be, all of those things are really the basics that you need to understand to run this for your agency. So just wanted to make that point clear. So let's look at a little bit of how PPC actually works. Obviously it has to do with search engines and just so you know, search engines can include YouTube. YouTube is just a video search engine. But let's just say I wanted to do kitchen remodel in Atlanta, right? What it's gonna do is you can see right here, we have Google is broken down into a few different sections. Number one, we have this top paid section. We have what's called the listings and maps section, right? And reviews section. Then we have our first organic section. And then we finish off with more ads, okay? So these ads up here are considered one through three. These ads way down here are considered four through six. You obviously want to be at the top. These are gonna be the best performing. This being the best performing ad out there. All right, and so that's all you really need to know. The paid version or pay-per-click is what automatically brings your ads to the top. Whereas SEO, it's going to take work and time and effort. And you might not always be able to end up in that number one spot for some industries or for some specific types of searches. So that's all pay-per-click is. We're trying to get ads to show up right here. And then what happens when we click on one of these ads? Well, let's show you. If I click on this ad, the best kitchen remodeling, new kitchen in five days, you can see it's actually just going to take us over here to their, it looks like a contact page maybe. Usually you're gonna take someone to a landing page or a contact page or an appointment page or maybe even a uh, phone call page where they can, you know, cl uh, click to call you, right? It goes automatically to a phone call. Those are best to use with like mobile campaigns. But you can see right here, we have an offer of 0% financing and free granite or quartz limited offer click now, right? So we're definitely running some kind of offer on this page to get people to look at, you know, new kitchen top countertops or whatever, right? Let's look at Platinum Kitchens. They're running a different kind of ad. It's the same keyword that they're targeting and they're driving people right to a kitchen remodel page right to show what their kitchen kitchen remodeling services are like right so or they might just actually specialize in kitchen remodeling yep it looks like all they do is kitchens right so this yeah platinum kitchens and design that's pretty much all they do is what it looks like so we have another landing page again driving people or another ad driving people to a landing page all about kitchen remodeling 
okay? And so that's really how pay-per-click ads work. So how do we actually get to the point where we have a campaign on Google? Well, the first thing we want to talk about is some of the different keywords or not keywords, but key terms that you're going to want to understand uh, with Google AdWords, all right? Or with pay-per-click advertising in general. All right, and that's going to be broad match, negative keywords, broad match, modifier, phrase match, and exact match. And there's a little chart down here. If you guys want, we're going to leave this link for you in the description. So make sure you just go right below this video in the description. You can check out these terms a little bit more uh, for yourself, or you can just go to Google and type in broad match or keyword matching options, and that should get you to the same article. So with broad match, it's very similar to this kitchen remodel Atlanta. And what it's going to do is it's going to find ads that are targeting these three keywords in a broad sense, right? They might have other keywords in there like kitchen remodel Atlanta today. You know, that might be one of their keywords that they're targeting, right? And if they had this type of search in there along with the kitchen remodel Atlanta, all would be shown, or at least all of those ad those ads would show for all of those different types of keywords. Basically saying that if any of those keywords existed in a search, we're going to show it. That's all broad matches. It's the broadest type you can get. Next is negative keywords. And negative keywords are just going to simply be keywords that we don't want to target. So basically, if somebody types in baseball hats, like you can see in this example right here, we're not going to show it. And I'll zoom in so you guys can see it a little bit more. But baseball hats, if somebody typed in baseball hats, we're not going to show our ad. That's all that really does, right? Broad match plus modifier, make sure that we have specific keywords included. So let's say I wanted to do general or kitchen remodel Atlanta, but I also wanted to make sure that we had like uh, granite for granite countertops and I don't know, crown molding. And we would actually want to do a plus if we wanted to include molding as well, right? crown plus molding. And this is actually what the keyword setup that we would put inside of our ad campaign. We would make sure to do plus crown plus molding plus granite if we wanted these keywords to be included in our search results, right? Um, and or at least in our in the search results that a client or that a customer, a potential customer might be putting into Google, right? So broad match modifier, the great or the reason why it's so great is because it makes your keyword searches or your ads more intent specific. It's going to limit your traffic, but it will get people who are looking specifically for those keywords that you're typing in with plus signs. So the next one we want to talk about is phrase match and phrase match is basically just going to include any other variations of the search that you have in quotations basically saying if there's words before or after it we're going to include it there can't be any words in between so it couldn't be women's green hats right you couldn't add green or anybody who searched women's green hats wouldn't get this specific ad but anybody who typed in black women's hats or women's hats medium if that's the size that they wore for some reason right those searches would be included but again women's green hats would not be included in the potential customers who would see that ad okay exact match is going to be the last one and this is pretty much exactly that if a potential customer goes on to google and searches for hats for women it's going to show that and it will also show variations of that search that are exactly similar so for example google knows the difference between women's and ladies but it also knows that it's pretty much the exact same thing hats for women right hats women all of these are searches that will also show up or that uh, all of these are keywords that will also be allowed when someone types in women's hats right if we do an exact match type these other types of keywords if somebody goes to google and they type those in these types of keywords are also going to allow to allow our ad to show as well so again i know this can be confusing but don't worry again we're going to leave the link in the uh, description below if you want to check out more so let's talk a little bit more about how all of this works now that we kind of understand the broad match type and modified phrase match exact match type the next thing we're going to want to kind of understand is how keywords play a part right so what we want to actually do is when we're trying to create a pay-per-click campaign we're basically just coming up with a list of keywords that we're going to target right and when people type those keywords in on google we're going to show an ad to them driving them to a landing page or a sales page right so that being said, we need to know what keywords to use. So that's where you're going to use something like Google Keyword Planner. You're going to come in. I like to use start with keywords and then we can just do, for example, we're going to type in social media marketing courses, right? And then I'll even put in my URL, which is going to help us make sure we get other keywords that might be related. All right. And then boom, we're going to click get results. 
and it's going to bring up this big chart of keywords, right? And all of these are keywords that we can potentially target in our campaign that people are actually typing in. So we would start to set up keyword groups inside of Google Ads Manager uh, AdWords, right? And so what that means is basically we would take all of our keywords that are related to social media marketing courses or training or classes, anything that would be related to, you know, training itself. And we would group those into a keyword group called SMMA courses, right? And that would be, or SMMA training keywords, something like that. And then we would start to target those keywords in one keyword group to a specific audience and pretty much take the same mentality that we use for our Facebook ads and audiences, except for we apply it to keyword targeting, right? Now we, we need to understand, okay, well, what kinds of keywords should we target? And so what I'm actually going to do is the cool thing is you can download all of these into an Excel spreadsheet and start to build your list of keywords that you want to include. Uh, the cool thing is you can actually start checking them off right over here. And then once you're done, you're just going to click downward, download keyword ideas. You can even do it to make it to where it's like exact match or phrase match so that way you can filter out keywords you don't want. We can even broaden our search up here so we can do digital marketing courses and add that to this list as well. We can click get results. It's going to add digital marketing courses and actually I would include those. I might separate them out if I was spending $1,000 per keyword. Like if I spent $1,000 on social media marketing courses and $1,000 on digital marketing course, I would probably break those apart as far as testing to see which one works better. But in my opinion, both of these are gonna be pretty much the exact same thing. So we're probably gonna look at both of them together in one group. But again, once we get our keyword list down and we know what keywords we want to include, we're gonna download them all and then we'll have them in this list like this. And what we can do is we're gonna do a little bit of an, an, an analysis to see our top of bid high range or top of page bid high range and then the top of page bid low range, right? So we know that what this basically tells us is it's gonna cost us $5.65 per click on the low range and $14.44 on the high range to show up in the top three results. Okay, and that's our goal. We're always trying to show up in the top three results. Also, some important factors because yeah, this is, you know, this isn't terrible as far as cost per click, but what really matters even more than that is making sure that we have search volume because if there's no search volume for a specific keyword like you, you're seeing here, we're getting 10 keywords per month. But if there's no search volume, it doesn't really matter because we're not showing our ads. So let me, it, and I don't want to confuse you guys because search volume, even on a lower end, does still benefit a business. So for example, search keywords or keywords with lower volume are usually less targeted by competition. So you can see here, it's looking like the average score is somewhere in the high 80s, low 90s, right? Well, you can see here, this 10 search volume only has an 82 competition score, right? And the cost per click is actually a little bit higher as well. So this might be something that we would target even though there's only 10 to 100 searches per month. Reason being is because there's less, sorry, 10 to 100 searches per month, but there's also less competition, meaning it will probably be a little bit cheaper. Even though the actual cost per click is more expensive, there aren't as many com people competing for this keyword. So it might be something that we add into our keyword keyword mix. And basically, again, we're just going to go through, we're going to create all of our keywords that we want to include in this one group, right? You wouldn't want to do something like we, I guess, wouldn't want to do something like social media marketing courses, and then start adding in words like Facebook ads, uh, Facebook lead ads, uh, how to run a YouTube channel, like those keywords we wouldn't add because they're not related to social media marketing courses. Again, when you look at your keywords, look at it based on search intent and don't cross different intentions, right? If one intent is completely different from another, you don't cross your intents because you're having completely different audiences come in on one ad that are going to get completely different messages and probably not convert, right? Because you're, you're confusing people or you're just not delivering value and information based on what they're searching for, right? So make sure that your keywords actually make sense that you choose in this list. And since we're talking about PPC, guys, I love this article and this little graphic that's been created by WordStream. I think I've seen this graphic for at least five years, maybe 10 years. I'm not really sure how old this graphic is, but I do know it is one of the oldest out there and it's definitely the top one because it explains how cost per click works and how ranking actually works with regards to the ads that you're trying to buy. So let's look at it like this. Advertiser one has $2 per bid, right? Max $2 per bid. Advertiser two has four, three has six, and four has eight, right? But 
we also see this thing here called quality score. And quality score is basically just how well your ad is performing. Is it delivering? Are people clicking? When people click, do they stay on the page or exit really quickly or go back really quickly and go and click on another ad? Because that tells Google that people aren't finding the information they're looking for. They're not getting the value that you promised you were going to give them. So what we can see here is we have a quality score of 10, four, two, and one. And then we have our ad rank, 20, 16, 12, and eight. What this is telling us here is this person is actually going to spend less per bid. You can see that here, they're spending $1.61, right, per click, basically because they have a higher ad rank and they have a higher quality score. They have a lower max bid though, right? You would expect that this campaign or this advertiser would show up in lower search results or that they wouldn't get the best cost per click possible. Well, what's happened is again, Google as their job is to deliver relevant search results. Well, that means they're going to reward people who basically deliver ads that are beneficial to the people searching, right? So if I'm delivering an ad and people are super happy, they're clicking and then they're following through with that ad, then Google wants to reward that because we're delivering, they're delivering a search result that's beneficial to its audience or to its customers, right? So they're going to give you the cheaper cost. I love this breakdown though, because again, it shows you exactly kind of how it works. But what I want you guys to also get out of this is that there's only so much inventory, right? Inventory being this search volume here for every single keyword. You have to look at keywords as inventory because with peg per click, that's all it is, it's inventory. How many keywords or how many times are people searching that keyword every single month, right? And you want to know that because you're not gonna get all of those impressions or even all of those clicks, right? And again, we'll leave this article or this link below in the description for this video as well. And it's definitely something you'll want to check out because WordStream does a lot with pay-per-click uh, and they're, 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 they do a lot of studies and informational resources about pay-per-click. So I definitely recommend checking this out. Also, they give you an industry breakdown on cost per click in 20 of the most common industries. So that way you get an idea of if you're spending in the right area or if you're spending too much you know it'll let you know those those specific metrics but again don't take that to heart because it's different in every geographical location it's different per product per service per industry right so even if you get on here and you're like oh our cost per click for this looks like legal yeah legal the average cost per click is five dollars and 88 cents yeah that's not even close to true the average cost per click for ads on pay-per-click as far as the legal industry is concerned, is probably like 15 to 20, maybe 30. But if you break that down and include smaller suburban areas, yes, it will be a lot lower. But if you go into most, you know, bigger cities or most areas with a larger population, it's actually much more expensive than 588 because attorneys know how much money there is to be made off of Google search results because why well people only look for an attorney when they need the service typically so again check out that article if it seems valuable or interesting to you so really quickly guys I want to stress budgeting all right and you guys saw in the previous example we did or in the previous little clip we just showed we were talking about social media marketing courses and digital marketing courses right and there were all those keywords that were related to that that we could include in that group and each one of them has a cost per click ranging anywhere from two dollars up to we saw 25 30 dollars right and that's just one click which yes that means it's a valuable person because they're typing in that exact search so maybe they're looking for that specific product but it doesn't always mean they're going to convert and again that's only one search term we could also do things like our personal branding and influencer marketing program that we would want to promote we have a facebook marketing program that we'd want to promote we have a mentorship program that we might would want to promote, which the mentorship program couldn't go under SMMA training, but it's a completely different course, which would also require a completely different sets of keyword groups. And we just saw again, how expensive those keywords can be. But if I want to promote more than one product, I'm going to need a decent sized budget. And this is why I always tell people how important it is to make sure you're budgeting your PPC campaigns properly and not to even worry about spending if you don't have a budget of at least a thousand to $1,500 per month, because you can see there are so many different types of keyword groups that we could potentially target just for one product, right? And if all of those potential keyword groups have, you know, thousands of searches per month and the average cost per click is let's just say $10, we're only going to get at most 100 clicks per month out of that, right? So you have to make sure that you're getting the best bang for your buck, but also you have to make sure that you're able to afford the service that 
you're about to take on, or at least that your client is able to afford the service that they are about to take on. So if you want to learn more about pricing and anything like that, you can feel free to check out that video right up here in the top right hand corner. All right, so now that we know a little bit about how this would work, let's go ahead and show you guys how to set up a campaign. Again, if you don't know what you're doing in here, or if you don't know everything about this, uh, platform, then you will not want to manage this yourself. Please don't like try and prove me wrong on this because you won't. All right. But if you know what you're doing, feel free to come in here and obviously you probably don't even need this video, <laughs> right? But we're going to click the plus sign just so you, and even if you aren't going to run these, I recommend doing this either way because you need to understand how it works and the really really the only way to understand how it works is to get in here and at least play around with it I'm not saying run and manage the campaigns regularly but you do need to get in here and understand how it works so we're just going to click new campaign now you have your different ad objectives like you would on facebook we're just going to do leads and you can see down here they even tell you where it's going to show up or the possible places it can show up we're going to do search and we're going to do website visits. A lot of you, since you're working with local, you'll either do store visits or phone calls. Most of you won't even do store visits unless it's like a restaurant or, I mean, really restaurants benefit from these the most. You could do things like nail salons and hair salons, stuff like that. But really you're gonna try and go for phone calls or website visits even more than that. Website visits being like an appointment page, right? So we're gonna click website visits and I'm gonna type in serial entrepreneurs website again. All right, now we're gonna click continue and we're gonna set up our campaign. Now we have the type of campaign with the goal, right? We'll give our campaign a name. We need to select whether we want to include it in Google search partners, which these are other websites or the display network, which are other websites. Again, we just want it inside of Google's display no network and Google search network. Um, you guys can choose to do it however you want. If you don't have a massive budget, I don't recommend leaving these on here. All right, those are more for people who are spending a shit ton every single month. Uh, you'll even uh, adjust your settings here for your start and end dates. You'll set your end date. If you have any campaign URL options, like specific tracking uh, elements you want to enter in, you'll put those in right here. Uh, if you want to do dynamic search ads, then what this will do is it'll actually find information and headlines and stuff like that off of your website and enter it into the search ad itself. I do not recommend using this version. In my opinion, you will get a lot better results from using a copywriter. You'll actually select uh, select your location. You'll select your language if that's specific to you. You'll select your audiences if you want to do targeting or observation. Observation is obviously the recommended. I recommend if you're new to this, you just set it as observation. You'll set up your budget. <clears throat> and again, try to keep in mind your cost per click ratios. You know, $10 per day might not get you a ton if you have an average $10 cost per click across your industry. But if you have $2, you'll get five decent clicks per day, which is a good amount of traffic per month. That's 150 new visitors every single month to a sales page, a landing page, a checkout page, an appointment setting page, whatever you're trying to get them to. And I don't recommend setting up your maximum cost per click uh, bid limit unless you have tons of data to support your, your entry uh, beforehand. If you don't have any data, you don't know what your maximum cost per click bid limit is, okay? So leave that open for now. Uh, you can add in site link extensions, which are going to be extra websites. So for example, I'll just show you guys up here. It's when you have on your ad, if you have other ads you want to show, like or other landing pages you want to show. So this ad right here for Nike's website is also showing Nike new releases, custom Nike shoes, Nike uh, new Nike Pegasus 32, and new Nike free shoes, right? So those are other site links that you can include in your one campaign. You can do different call out extensions, all right? And these are other, th like you could offer or show different services that you have or different things that make you special. So we could do something like, you know, uh, free today only or uh you know lifetime guarantee you know stuff like that is what you can put right here location extensions is if you have several locations and call extensions if you have diff uh, several different call phone numbers right move into the next part and this is where you're actually going to start set, setting up those keywords or phrases or whatever you wanted to use right here. You can see here we can do a standard or dynamic ad group type. Again, if you don't know what that means, it's pretty much right here. But, but dynamic pretty much means that you're going to use the best ad group with the best ad possible, right? If one ad group seems to perform better to one ad, then that's what you're going to use. Especially if you're using multiple ad groups, this is actually one, you know, that's a super useful feature right there. So again, we would do something like social media courses, and that would be our keyword right here. And then we would copy and paste. All we would do is take that Excel spreadsheet that we opened up, right? 
we'll take this guy right here once we have our keyword list finalized and we're just going to copy and paste all of those keywords and put them in right here boom then we'll save and continue and then we'll start to set up our actual ad so from here this is what people will actually see on google so you'll set up your headline uh you know we could do top social media marketing and i even know people know it as sma so, so social media course and we would do right here we would actually do smma training right top social media course and we might even be able do we have enough characters yep 2019 top social media course 2019 smma training boom right there right we can even do a third we're probably not going to do that third though normally a lot of people don't do that you can set up your path here right your different paths if you have different paths for your url and then we'll set up our description right so this could actually be we'll do uh what is it slash smma Right, so you can see right here, this is like that uh, display link that you'll see on Facebook ads. And we'll just put SMMA training, or actually we'll do SMMA course right here. Right, and in path two. So what you usually wanna do is keywords related to what people are actually searching for, right? So we'll do SMMA right here. We'll do, um, you know, agency training right here boom all right now we'll do our description the best sma training you know that could be our description then we can add in different url options if we're doing different tracking ids for different uh ads and then boom we pretty much have our ad ready to go you can do a different final url for mobile if you have a different like mobile url that you're using but most times you won't do that most people actually have their things mobile optimized now right we actually have seven too many characters up here so we'll just do by all right and now our ad is pretty much ready to go we can actually just click done and we'll save it boom now we have our ad ready to go we can create different variations of this one ad right and we can do split testing and boom once you're done you're just going to click save and continue it'll take into the confirmation page and then you just wait for your ad to be approved or denied if it's denied you make any adjustments to your campaign so what specific services should you include for your ppc offerings the first thing is going to be account audits guys you can actually choose to include this in your services if you'd like or you can choose to charge for it and people charge thousands of dollars for these types of audits. So up to you what you want to do there, but it is a potential service you could offer. Next could be the account setup or build out. And this could be taking information that you already have in an account and making it better or just completely building it out, right? Usually we charge a setup fee for that, right? So make sure that you're doing that. Number three would be any landing pages. Guys, don't just run pay-per-click ads necessarily to a sales page and expect that to convert or even to a contact page or an appointment page. Sometimes it takes giving people information or sending them to a, an enticing landing page that actually has a decent call to action and structure to drive people to take that specific action, right? So if you're going to be setting up those landing pages though, you should be charging for them. Don't do them for free, they're not free, right? And not to mention you have to set up all the pixel and tracking data. Make sure that if you're gonna create landing pages that you're charging for those as well, but they are a great service to sell along with PPC campaigns. Next you have analytics and implementation of tracking and PPC campaigns are really pointless without any form of analytics or tracking going along with it. So that is something you'll charge for. And then finally is actual consulting. Now, obviously management is included in there as well, but consulting is something that you can charge for and literally just go up to a business that's already running their own pay-per-click campaigns and give them information on what they could be doing better to improve their campaigns. Now, again, if you're not a PPC expert, you can't really do consulting, or at least I wouldn't recommend it. But again, if you are an expert or if you have an expert on your team, you can easily offer that service. But guys, that is it for this video. Again, if you are a marketing agency owner, you don't need to learn how to be an expert PPC advertiser. It's going to take months and months and months for you to get good at PPC advertising. So I recommend finding a great advertiser or pay-per-click manager and paying that person a decent amount to manage your campaigns for you. That being said, if you want to learn more about starting a marketing agency, then make sure to check out this video in the top right hand corner. 
talks exactly about that. But guys, that is it for today's video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about how to run a PPC campaign, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Since you stayed till the end, make sure to check in the description right below this video, at the very, or towards the very top at least, you'll find our SMMA checklist and free two week training. Again, that's right in the description below this video. But that is it for today's training, and I will see you guys on the next one. Until then, Serial Entrepreneur out. Bye guys. Ready to start living the six figure work wherever, be your own boss lifestyle? Well, at Serial Entrepreneur Academy, we'll teach you how to use a laptop and internet to start your own social media and digital marketing agency. Get started with our free Facebook ads training. Links in the description below, guys. See you in the course. Serial Entrepreneur out.